I'm Annette Baker Malpass. Welcome to my very own kitchen here in Yorkshire. As the new proud owner of Atifal Steam Cuisine, I hope to show you that steaming is not just an efficient, economical, convenient way of cooking, but it can also be simple and great fun. It's so easy to use and during the course of this video, I hope that we're going to show lots of recipes so you can really get the maximum out of your steam cuisine. Now before we begin any recipes at all, let me just introduce you to the Tfile Steam Cuisine you've just purchased. Here we have our base unit and it will take about two pints of ordinary cold tap water to fill. We have a maximum water mark that's clearly visible from the inside and the outside. We also have a raise measure here so you can tell when your water container is full. We also suggest to put a little extra water in the turbo in the centre. Next we come to our drip tray. Now the very clever design of the drip tray means that we don't have to always take our steamer baskets off to actually fill up. We can fill either side through the sides here. That's our drip tray going on and then we have our bowls. We have one 4 litre bowl and we have two identical 3 litre bowls. It doesn't matter which way round you put them on. They do of course have the removable bases but we'll see more about that a little bit later. Our third bowl goes on and that one also has the lid on. Now it has an automatic 60 minute timer here so we can actually set the timer, walk away and we can leave it totally unattended as we'll be seeing. Right, the first set of recipes I'm calling Easy Entertaining. Now the first recipe is for a chicken nichoise and I have all the ingredients set out here. Now I've got some fresh bay leaves here and I've got some lovely plump chicken breasts. Now I'm going to put my chicken breasts onto the foil and I'm going to make just a little parcel of the foil. I'm going to drizzle a little bit of um, olive oil on which is very good and very healthy for us and I'm also going to put some fresh herbs on as well and while they are steaming I can actually start assembling the rest of my ingredients. Now the rest of my ingredients actually consists of French beans and new potatoes both of which have already steamed beautifully keeping the colour, the vibrancy and all the goodness in. I've used my steam cuisine for that. The other ingredients of course that are so important are the tomatoes and of course we've got some lovely black olives here. It really is a super easy dish and it does make a great sort of a main course for a dinner party. I'm going to put my chicken in the bottom layer of my steamer in my loosely wrapped parcel of foil. If I wanted to give that a little bit of starting time I could actually put my lid on at any time at all now switch it on and give my chicken five or six minutes cooking but I'm actually going to do the whole meal at the same time so I'm actually going to put my monkfish and prawn kebabs in the middle and I've even got a dessert which we'll see in the, in the top. Now I'm going to use the rice bowl in actual fat because it is a lot more versatile than just using it for rice and I'm going to use a nice herby marinade and I'm going to brush my kebabs generously with the marinade now that's going to go in the middle course of my steamer and then while the chicken breasts are cooking which go towards our main course our starters will be ready and all we have to do is to sit down and enjoy. Now that's going to go into the middle steamer here and I'm also going to just brush it very very liberally. Now obviously the marinade is actually going to go and be collected in the steamer bowl and that's fine because if there's any marinade left over afterwards you can actually pour that over the finished hot dish as you serve it to the table. I might actually just give that another marinade halfway through the cooking. It's going to take about 20 minutes on the middle layer. And now we come to what for many people will be the very best part of the meal, the dessert. Now we're combining two classic fruits, bananas and oranges. My bananas are diced and I put a little lemon juice in them. Always a good idea if you want to keep uh, fruit from going brown. I'm also going to add a little bit of brown sugar, a couple of very small smidgens of butter, 
the zest of some orange, some orange juice, some Cointreau. I'm just going to make sure that our little ramekin dishes are going to be evenly filled. Next, we're going to put on just a little tiny bit of butter, a little bit of orange zest going over the top, about a teaspoonful of any soft brown sugar, demerara sugar, would be absolutely fine. And then here we've got some freshly squeezed orange juice. And you can be quite generous with this. And you can also be as generous as you like with the Cointreau. Now I'm going to put these little ramekin dishes in the third steamer tier. I'm just going to put a couple of pieces of foil on just to prevent any condensation from getting onto the top of our banana and orange desserts. That's it. Now I'm going to put my timer on and I'm going to give it 20 minutes. So now the 20 minutes is up. It's time to have a little look and see how our food is doing. Now I would always say exercise caution when taking the lid off the steamer. Steam can be very, very hot. I'm going to turn it upside down to prevent the condensation from getting onto my work surface. And on the top layer, here we have our lovely bananas. And then the next layer down, we've got those gorgeous, sumptuous prawn and monkfish kebabs that have been marinated in that lovely flavour oil. We'll just have a little peek at our oranges from Cointreau and bananas. That looks fabulous. And then here we have our chicken breast. And all we've got to do now is actually slice the chicken breast and assemble it with the rest of our ingredients. And then we have our lovely chicken nichoise. So there we have our starter, our main course, and our dessert. All done in the Tifal Steam Cuisine. So there we have it, our starters, which is our lovely monkfish and prawn kebabs. Our main course, which is the chicken nichoise and our dessert, which is bananas and oranges in Cointreau with lovely whipped cream. Now, if that's whetted your appetite, stay with me because the next section coming up is classic puddings. And now we come to what for many will be the best bit of all, classic desserts or puddings to you and I. Now, I'm going to cook three today using the TFAR Steam Cuisine. Now, the first one we're going to concentrate on is Queen of Puddings. But I'm also going to cook a traditional chocolate sponge pudding. And I'm also going to do some warm lemon pots. So I'm going to actually be utilising all three tiers of my steamer. Queen of Puddings first, then. Now, in here in my saucepan, I have three ounces of fresh white breadcrumbs. I have warmed gently three quarters of a pint of milk. You can use full fat milk, or if like me, you're trying to watch the calories, semi-skim milk is absolutely fine. There's a dessert spoonful of sugar, and the only other ingredient that needs to go in are two egg yolks. Now, the recipe uses two eggs in their entirety, but the yolks actually go in in this stage. We're going to use the whites a little bit later on. So now we've beaten in the two egg yolks into the breadcrumb and egg mixture, and I'm now going to pour that into my buttered ramekin dish. If you don't have a dish that's suitable, then the rice bowl that actually comes with the appliance, if you butter it well or line it with cling film or foil, that would work perfectly well as well. Now all the mixture goes in. Now I'm going to put that in the bottom tier of our steamer. I'm actually going to though cook the other two desserts at the same time. The Queen of Puddings will actually need 30 to 35 minutes or until it actually fills firm to the touch. And I'm going to just cover it with a piece of foil to prevent any condensation from dripping into the pudding. And I'm now going to prepare the next pudding which is chocolate pudding, and that's going to steam in the middle tier. Now the next recipe we're going to cook is a traditional chocolate pudding. In here I've got four ounces of butter or margarine, creamed together with four ounces of caster sugar. 
I then have sifted in six ounces of self-raising flour with two tablespoons of cocoa powder. I'm also going to put in a little naughty extra, and that's just a few chocolate chippings. Now, I'm going to just roughly mix those into the mixture. Now, this can actually be made in one large two-pint pudding bowl, but I think they're rather nice to serve in these little individual bowls. You'll also notice that I put some extra chocolate chips just in the bottom of each one. So we're going to spoon our mixture on top of the chocolate chips. Now, they're going to take about the same cooking time as the Queen of Puddings that's waiting to get going in our bottom tier. And I'm also going to cover these with foil, so again, none of the condensation will actually spoil our puddings. Now the final recipe I'm going to cook in our classic trio of puddings today are warm lemon pots. Now in my bowl already I have six ounces of sieved cottage cheese and six ounces of curd cheese. Now this is actually a very healthy low calorie pudding. It's only going to have a tablespoonful of sugar going into it and it's only going to have egg whites, no egg yolks. So I'm going to add my sugar the next ingredients that go in are the grated zest of a lemon and the juice of a lemon. And then the egg whites go in. I'm going to just spend a few moments or so just folding those in to incorporate all that. So here I am then filling up my little ramekin dishes with the two cheese mixture the cottage cheese and the curd cheese and as we said earlier it is a fairly healthy dessert as desserts go because it only has a tablespoonful of sugar in it. Now I'm going to actually put those into the top tier and then it's almost time to switch my steamer on. I'm going to just put one nice piece of foil on the top. I could of course put little individual pieces of foil over each one but as long as it's got a little lid on as a cover, that's all we need. So there we have it. We have our queen of puddings in the bottom tier. We've got our scrumptious chocolate sponge puddings in the middle tier. And on the top, we've got our warm lemon pots. All that remains for me to do is to switch them on and start cooking. Now I'm going to set the timer for 30 minutes and then we'll have a little look and see how they're doing. I'm going to just take the top two tiers off and we're going to have a little look at those in a moment because they should be cooked completely. We're just going to have a little peep as well and to see how our queen of puddings is doing. Oh yes, that's the look that we're going for. So all I need to do now is take that out. I'm going to spread it with some gorgeous raspberry jam, put the two egg whites that didn't go into the mixture on the top and we're going to just flash it under a very hot grill. It'll take a couple of minutes, that's all. So there we have our three classic puddings cooked all together in the Tifar Steam Cuisine. The Queen of Puddings on the bottom, the chocolate sponge puddings in our middle tier, and right at the top we had our warm lemon pots. Now the next dish we're going to show really does prove the versatility of the Tifar Steam Cuisine. We're going to steam a classic British dish. I've got here a beautiful large piece of gammon. Now in the normal way, there is no way that it would actually fit properly in any of the steam tiers that you see here. So let's have a little look and see how we do it. Now I'm going to put my gammon straight in on the bottom tier. That's going in like that. Now, in the normal way, of course, by putting our tears on like that, it just simply won't work. So what do we do? Let's have a little look. Now, because the new steamer bowls, the bases will come out very easily. So what we're going to do is just remove one of those bases, and that will be all we need to accommodate our ham. Now, I'm also going to cook something a little later on, but that doesn't need any cooking yet. My gammon's going to take about four hours in total. Obviously, during that lengthy cooking time, I am going to have to refill with water, but this is even nice and easy. Now we can actually pour the water either here or here. 
Obviously, with that length of cooking time, though, you will perhaps have to empty the drip tray once or even twice. But that's lovely stock or juices that makes brilliant soup afterwards. So the gammon's had its first 50 minutes or so of cooking. It's time to top up the water level. This is now very easy with the new Tifal steam cuisine. I don't have to take the bowls off. I can actually just refill either side, whichever's most convenient. As I said before, for a long cooking time though, you might just like to check the drip tray underneath to see whether that needs emptying. And that's all there is to it. Now it's time to cook the potatoes. My gammon has already had about three and a half hours cooking time and has just switched itself off. I'm going to put the potatoes on the top and just while the gammon finishes off cooking, the potatoes will cook beautifully. Now again, to take the lid off, I would always suggest exercise caution and do use oven gloves. If you turn the lid upside down, that will prevent lots of condensation from actually getting onto your work surface. Now straighten the tears up, like so. Lift the potatoes on. The lid goes back on again. And then I'm going to set the timer for just about another 25 minutes and then the whole meal will be cooked and ready. So now we have our gammon perfectly cooked in the steamer. If you want to make it really special though for a celebration meal or a super buffet, this is my suggestion. Take the rind off and just score the fat that's actually left. Triangles are nice because they'll open out when you put it into a nice hot oven. Now I'm going to put some brown sugar on and I'm going to be a little generous here, bearing in mind that this is just the glaze. Now it's a good idea to be quite generous with the sugar and even pat it down using fingers so you do get a generous amount of sugar. Now the honey I'm going to drizzle over also quite generously and I would suggest this will take about half an hour in total in the oven as hot as it will go, uh, gas mark eight or nine, as hot as that and it'll need about half an hour and I would suggest halfway through the cooking process to just actually open the oven door and just give the lovely gammon another base with the honey juices and the brown sugar that will have collected in the bottom of my roasting dish. So here we have the finished dish and doesn't our gammon look sumptuous and you remember those potatoes that cooked in the top tier? Well, all I've done with those is I've quartered them, I've put in some nice mayonnaise and I've sprinkled the top with spring onions. All in all, this dish really does show the true versatility of the Tifal steam cuisine. Vegetarian cooking has come an awfully long way from the proverbial nut roast or where you have to include lentils with everything. In fact, the first dish that I'm going to prepare, our spicy pilau rice, can be enjoyed equally well by us carnivores as well as vegetarians. Now, going through the ingredients, I've got in my frying pan two ounces of pineapple that can be um, fresh or canned, four chopped spring onions, a tablespoonful of raisins and I'm going to add a couple of ounces of cashew nuts. I'm also going to add a teaspoonful of ground coriander and just a pinch of um, hot spicy cayenne pepper. So that's all just going to have a little stir around and then that's going to go into my rice. Now in my rice bowl already, I have six ounces of pilau rice that I've actually um, soaked for 30 minutes, as the recipe will actually suggest. I'm going to put all this lovely spicy mixture in with the rice, and then I'm just going to add half a pint of stock. So that mixture goes in there, and I'm going to give it all a good stir, just so that all those grains of rice actually get, uh, get coated. Pop that in there like so. My stock's going to go in, and this is going to go in the bottom tier of my Tifal steam cuisine, and it's going to need 30 minutes of cooking time. Now, I'm going to actually give it a stir after about 15 minutes, and after it's had 15 minutes of cooking time, I will actually add some more ingredients to the other two steamer levels, and we'll cook several things at once, showing the true versatility of the steam cuisine. So in that goes, and for the moment I'm just going to pop my lid on and use it as a single tear steamer. 
I'm just going to turn it on and set the timer for 15 minutes, first of all. Our pilau rice has almost had its 15 minutes, its first cooking time, which just pinged. I'm now going to give it a stir, but before I do that and take the lid off, I'm going to make a start on our second dish. Now, I'm calling it nutty carrots, but it could be nutty anything. Now, carrots, if you steam them in the steam cuisine, will take on a natural sweetness all their own. So I've got here about a pound of diced carrots, and that's just going into the steamer bowl. I'm not going to use any salt at all, so this is a perfect recipe for anyone who has to have a low salt diet. What I am going to add, though, for a little bit of taste, but it also makes a wonderful glaze on the carrots, is a tiny spot of olive oil. There's about a, a, a large teaspoonful, no more. Just give that a mix round to actually coat and give the carrots a glaze. And then we're going to finish the dish off when we've done that with some walnuts broken in pieces, some toasted pine nuts and some chopped chives. About a tablespoonful of each of the nuts and just a little chopped chives. So again, exercising caution, taking my lid off, I will give my rice a stir and add the nutty carrots to the top. So I'm just giving my pillar rice a stir, that looks wonderful, and the carrots are all prepared, so they go on the top. All we've got to do now is prepare our third dish that's going to go in the top tier. Our third and final dish in this vegetarian section are lemony leeks with green vegetables. Now I've got here my leeks that I've actually washed and sliced, so they're going straight into my third steamer bowl. Now, the green vegetables you choose can be just a combination of vegetables, um, or you could just use one vegetable. For example, this works wonderfully with all mange too, or all green beans. On this occasion, I'm going to do a selection of mange too. I've got some sugar snap peas here, and I've also got some green beans. Now, what's going to give it a little bit of zest and a little bit of taste is the juice from a lemon, and I'm also going to add the zest of a lemon as well. Give it all a good stir, and then that will steam on top of our nutty carrots and the spicy pilau rice. And I'm going to put the steamer on for another 15 minutes, by which time everything will be cooked and will be ready to go. So now let's have a little look at our vegetables. On the top, we have our lemony leeks with green vegetables. We've got the carrots that aren't nutty yet, but will be when we finish with them, and the middle tier. And in the bottom, we've got our pilau rice. Now, if I'd have cooked this in the traditional way, I would have had to have had at least three saucepans on the hob. I couldn't have walked away and left them, whereas the steamer, you can leave unattended. It switches itself off, but it cooks a complete meal, as you can see. So here we have our vegetarian selection. We have our lovely lemony leeks and green vegetables, just a little parsley sprinkled on the top, our nutty carrots that we've garnished with some fresh chives, and of course our spicy pilau rice mixture, which has some fresh coriander, hard-boiled eggs for garnish, and of course we've got to serve that with some spicy poppadoms. Now I'm going to cook a very nice, healthy meal. My salmon steaks are going to be the first part of my meal. I'm going to do a lovely selection of um, gorgeous vegetables, and you can use whatever is in season um, as well. And then I'm also going to do a dessert, we're not forgetting that, and that's going to be some lovely uh, hot spicy fruit. First of all, we'll start with the salmon. Now, I'm going to lightly season them with salt and pepper. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually place some nice fresh herbs in the bottom of my steamer. And I'm going to actually just snip off some fresh parsley. I'm also going to put some uh, fresh bay leaves. They're going in there as well. And then I'm actually going to just place my salmon steaks on top of the bed of herbs. Now, the salmon steaks are going to take about 15 to 20 minutes of actual cooking. You can be the judge of this depending on how thick your salmon steaks are. These are quite nice chunky ones, so I would say that about 15 minutes of cooking um, will actually be fine. Now, this is what I'm calling my medley of vegetables. I would always suggest to use fresh vegetables that are in season. So we've got a nice selection available to us today. 
and I think that's going to make a wonderful selection and a wonderful colourful accompaniment to go with our salmon steaks. I'm using the larger bowl because I'm cooking quite a lot of vegetables. Bearing in mind the Tifal Steam Cuisine has got two three-litre sized bowls and one four-litre. My salmon steaks are in the three-litre, the four-litre has the vegetables in and that's going to go on the top of the salmon steaks. Now, even healthy eating deserves a pudding. What I've got here today is a nice selection of fruits that, again, are all in season at the moment. But again, I won't be specific what you should use because almost any fruit will work wonderfully with this recipe. I've got here some um, fresh blackberries and raspberries. And I've also got some wonderful plums. I'm also going to put in some strawberries. Now, I'm going to just squeeze a little bit of... Um, orange juice, fresh orange juice over the top and I've also got here a little bit of raspberry coulis. Now I'm going to pour in just a little touch of brandy. It will just add to the flavour but uh, it won't add to the calories or our waistline I promise you. So I'm going to drizzle the um, raspberry coulis over my fruit and again we don't want too much, we don't want to actually swamp or saturate our fruit. So that's just going over like so. And you'll notice I'm actually using the rice bowl for this. Now, the rice bowl doesn't have to be used just for rice at all. So this is going to go in the top tier. And then we're going to get everything sorted and switch it all on. So our meal is all cooked. Let's have a little look at it. Now, again, I'm just going to use my oven mitts because although it's switched off the steam can be very hot and there we have in the top tier our lovely fruit our medley of vegetables is next and then in the bottom tier we've got our lovely salmon steaks so there we have our healthy option meal First of all, we've got those lovely strawberries, raspberries, black currants and plums with the raspberry coulis over, just decorated with a little bit of fresh mint. Next, we come to our wonderful selection, the medley of vegetables, and I've just put a little bit of fresh parsley over those. And then our salmon steaks that are steamed beautifully. And just to give people the choice of serving a spoonful of creme fraiche with little chives on there. And who said that healthy food doesn't look good? So there we are. I hope you will enjoy using the Tifal Steam Cuisine as much as I do. And I hope I have given you just a small taste of the many, many dishes that can be cooked effortlessly in the Steam Cuisine. Whether you're a budding chef or whether you absolutely hate cooking, it really is foolproof. You need cold water, the Tifal Steam Cuisine and your own ingredients. But please do remember, you'll also find in the recipe book that comes with the product, lots of other lovely recipes that you might like to try as well. So that's it for me. I have enjoyed it and I hope to see you again sometime. So from Annette Baker-Malpass here in Yorkshire, goodbye.